So, all right, guys, welcome back to Indoor Smokers. Hope you guys are having a great day where you are at. I'm excited because I've got a story time to tell you guys today. I also got an awesome package here from Zample Box. Check this out. It's like the, the special fucking deluxe package here, and it's even perfectly balanced. Oh, yeah, that's a spinner's dream right there. But the coolest thing about this is not the fact that it spins. Check this out. When you open up the lid. What's up, big stuff? Indoor smokers, we love you, man. Super excited for you to get the ZB Go. We hope you love it. We put a lot of time and energy into this, and we give it to you. Have fun, man. Vape on, vape strong. That's Hell so yeah, nice. guys. Check We're that no out. Way. We know what makes it that great. is the kit we right there and then there is basically a whole commercial running on this thing too but still pretty cool man i've never seen a video included in a package i've gotten yet it's a good thing i didn't stick this one with the knife but we will take a look at this a little bit more in another video i just want to show you guys that little clip and thank sample box for sending me out this zb go deluxe kit so hang tight guys you ain't gonna want to miss this story time and i will be right back with that after this All right, guys, so as many of you know, I used to actually live off the grid actually a couple of times. Once in my early 20s, I lived up there by myself with my dogs at over 4,000 feet altitude on top of Badger Mountain here just out of town. And then I moved up there again after college with my wife at the time, Kelly, many of you know her, and we lived up there again for about five years. But this first time I lived up there for two years, it was just by myself with my dogs. And so it wasn't always possible in the wintertime to get up there. Sometimes you had to wait until the snow plows could get up on the main road because it would get fucking snowed out we'd actually had a little bit of a break in the weather so i think it was just before like eight o'clock i had headed down to a place we had a kmart and a grocery store called the fair i don't know if it's a chain or whether it was just a little local grocery store but anyways the fair and kmart were down off this little side road kind of down in a little separate strip mall area so i went down there just before they closed try to get my food and stuff just basically buying food for calories man when it's that fucking cold up on the mountain you just need to have some calories to burn to keep the furnace going so i would get hot dogs bun some other little fucking cheap like quarter they had these little quarter candy bars these fudge brownies that were chocolate nut fudge brownies they were 25 cents a piece and had 450 calories that was just about the best fucking calorie per penny you know that you could spend although it was a little bit disturbing that if you read the actual ingredients nowhere in there did it say the word chocolate or nuts so I don't know, figure that one out, but it was all fucking chemical and flour. But anyways, I spent my last few dollars I had, picked up some food so I could take that up to the mountain with me. I get out to the car just as the fair and Kmart are closing down and the fucking thing won't start. Turning it over, turning it over. It's just turning and turning, but it won't start. It won't start. Fuck, man, it is cold. In case I didn't mention it, this was a fucking freezing-ass cold night. I didn't even know what was going on, man. It was like one of the coldest nights I'd felt. So I'm just thinking, fuck, man, at least let me start the car so I can get some heat or something going. Nope, nope. Eventually, you know, it starts wow, wow, wow. And then it just does the clicks. Click, 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 click. Quickly, and you're just like, fuck, that's it. So I knew I was there for the night. You got to remember, this was back at the time before cell phones. There wasn't no way just to sit in the cab and call anybody to try to help them out. The Kmart and the fair are closed down. The pay phones were inside of there. So I would have had to hike like a half mile up to a gas station or something to use the phone. So I'm just like, fuck it, I'll figure it out tomorrow. Just going to crash in the cab tonight with my two dogs that I had in there too. Fucking cold as fuck, man. So that night... God damn, dude, it's just like the coldest freaking night I can ever remember. I got nothing, just my coat, no pillow, no blanket, no nothing. So I just shake and freeze all night, dude. I don't get any sleep that night. The next morning, the fair opens up at like 7 o'clock or something in the morning. So I go in there to get some coffee, and I look at the newspaper. And it's actually a big headline, record-breaking cold temperatures. It got down to 15 below zero that night. And they're saying it's going to get down to 20 below tonight. So I'm like, oh, fuck, man, 20 below zero, I can't do it. So I spend the day 
trying to go out and see if I can get somebody to bring me down a battery or something to try to jump start. I'm still not really sure what all is wrong with the truck. Man, this was an old beater truck. Could be fucking 10 different things going wrong with it. But it comes to that night, dude. It's getting late. It's getting to be like 7, 7.30. I know that Kmart's closing down in about a half hour and I can't fucking take it anymore, man. It's just too fucking cold. I'm like, I gotta go fucking steal a blanket, man. At this point, I don't even give a fuck if I get busted for stealing. They take me to jail. Fine, at least I got some heat that night in there, but I got to get something. So I go into that Kmart like maybe 20 minutes before closing. It's pretty empty in there. So I'm just like, fuck, man. I go down the row with all the blankets and shit there, and they have this one called the thermal blanket, whatever. It was kind of nice, fluffy, but it's still just a blanket, you know? It's not like a 20 below sleeping bag or something. So anyways, that shit was all in a bag with like a cardboard in the middle of it and shit. So I ripped that shit out. I got my big, long, like, trench coat on. So I pull the blanket out of the plastic bag and I fucking wrap it around my waist, you know? It's already folded up so I can just kind of wrap it right around, put my coat back, zip it up, and then that's it, man. I'm going for the front door. Like, fuck, dude, I just hope nobody stops me. And then there's one of those greeters, like the old dude standing at the door, and he's like, have a good evening, sir. And I just kind of give him that look, and I can tell he kind of catches my eye. I can tell it's like fucking when you see somebody who's starving or freezing or desperation in their eyes. I just kind of gave him the look, like, you just fucking mind your business, bitch. Don't try to stop me because I will go right through you. Anyways, nothing happens there. And I figure, fuck, man, if they do see me steal it or see it on the fucking cameras, then I'm going to be right out in the fucking parking lot with the blanket. There's not going to be much chance to really deny it. So anyway, I'm just taking my chances. Go back out in the car. Fuck, at least we got a blanket, man. So I'm able to put that like over. I put my legs up on top of the two dogs in the cab and then I got the blanket over them. So we're in the cab, the two dogs underneath my legs, got that blanket up, but fuck it, it's still so cold, dude, 20 below zero. I can't fucking sleep the whole night. It's miserable, dude. We've like at the fucking ends of our wits. Even the dogs have like given up trying to bark when people are coming or going. They don't give a shit no more. So I think I finally managed to get to sleep that night at like fucking 6, 7 a.m. right when the sun's finally coming through the cab a little bit, just get that tiny bit of relief. So I crashed until maybe like 10 or 11 and then I just remember out of nowhere dude I hear like a knock on the door and by this point there's like a fucking inch of ice on the windows and shit so I remember hearing a knock and I try to roll down that window and it ain't happening dude that's just like <laughs> you know it's just fucking solid ice so I gotta crack the door open and that thing's even hard to get open it's all frozen shut crack and then it's a fucking employee from the fair it looks like a young bagger or something that they sent out and they're like go fucking see what that guy's deal is and then he's just like um they wanted me to ask if you were going to be getting out of here today or what so i'm just like yeah man i'm trying to get a hold of some people who are going to bring me down a battery so i can get this thing jumped and get the fuck out of there obviously that's what my hope is you think i want to fucking be living here in 20 below zero for the rest of my fucking life i'm trying to get out of here man so anyways, he's like, okay, okay, I'll tell him. And so I finally, this is day number three now, I finally managed to get up, get a phone call, talk to my buddy Mike, and he's going to try to come down and, you know, help me out at some point or whatever, but he's got shit he's got to do. He's not sure when he's going to be able to get down there. So I just got to wait fucking back in that truck in the parking lot again for fucking Mike to get down there, help me out with something. So I'm just fucking, like I said, you don't even want to move, dude. It's so fucking cold. You don't even want to break that air pocket in a blanket, you know? So I'm just pretty much fucking there for hours just with the dogs and me covered in the blanket, just uh, miserable. And then I'll never forget out of fucking nowhere like, what are my fucking odds, dude? I'm already having a bad enough day. And so I'm just sitting there freezing, minding my business. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this fucking truck comes squealing in, fucking slides in the ice, like right up next to me. Boom. And then the dude jumps out, and he's all freaking out, pops his hood, fucking goes around the front. And I'm just sitting here looking through like that inch of ice, can kind of just see hazy what's going on. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, you couldn't pick another motherfucking part of the parking lot to have your catastrophe, man. It's like, I'm already having mine, okay? I got this corner. Anyways, that motherfucker pulls up right next to me, slides in, jumps out of the fucking pops the hood, jumps out, opens his hood up, and fucking fire, dude. His whole fucking engine's just on fire. And I'm like, what in the fuck? I gotta deal with this now. I'm already down and out, like the lowest point in my life. But I mean, he was close enough to me that I was like, fuck, if this whole fucking truck goes up, dude, it could catch on mine. And then where am I gonna fucking hang out? I got nothing. So I'm like, fuck. So I gotta like try to crack the truck, dude. And I know that motherfucker, he was not expecting anybody to be in that truck. That thing looked like it had been sitting there for weeks, totally iced over and shit. So when I fucking crack that door open and step out, he just looks like, what? And I swear to God, dude, I don't say a word to him. I just 
walk right over to where there's like a little bit of a snow drift, you know, on those islands that are in the parking lots of snow kind of piled up. So I get over there and I just put my hands in and pull up like a big old icy piece of snow like this fucking big in my hands, walk over to his truck and just go boom right on his fucking engine, right where all the fire was coming up because he'd already taken his coat off and was trying to smack it and shit. So I come over with that big ass snow and just go boom, fucking puts the whole thing out, dude, just covers the whole engine in snow. I turn around, don't say a word, walk back to my truck, get in, close the fucking door, put my blanket on, and that motherfucker's just looking like, what in the fuck just came out? Anyways, so he finally gets his truck and stuff towed. I am there, I think, until about maybe like five, six o'clock. It's already dark by the time Mike shows up. And then, of course, that son of a bitch ain't got no help for me. He ain't got no battery. We try to jump start it. It won't fucking start. So he just picks my ass up. All right, guys, I hope you had fun with that story. I got another great one to tell you about what would happen later on that night. So please do give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed these story time videos. Encourage me to get that next one up. And of course, if you have not subscribed already, then please do subscribe to this channel. Ring that little bell so you get notification when the videos go up. So all right, guys, that is going to do it for me. I will also throw a link down there where you guys can check out this awesome ZB Go. Maybe Chris and Ian will make a special message to you if you buy one of these. And then I hope you guys have a great rest of your vaping day. I know I didn't do a lot of vaping in this video, but I am still hitting my falcon tank on top of that veneno by smoke and it is fucking vaping great <laughs> Woo! oh yeah so i will put that link underneath the video where you can check out the falcon tank and the veneno mod by smoke <laughs>